Oh my Lord, Krishna. Oh my Lord, Krishna. Oh, pervading Krishna, the Godhead. Oh, for my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Chief Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And the primeval cause of all causes of the creation, maintenance, and destruction of the manifested universe. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there's no other cause beyond him. Is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji? The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen on fire or land seen on water, by him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into, oh, I'm sorry, only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma Projita Kaitravotra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Atra Vastu Shivadam Tapa Trayamu Shimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimva Purir Ishwaraha Sadyo Hiti Aburujate Tra Krite Bihi Susus Vistakshanad Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam, compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity, is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As, one is, as soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Nigama kalpaturur galitam falam. Sukhamakadam rita drabya samyutam. Vibhata bhagavatam rasam alayam. Muhur ahoraska bhuvibhavaka. O expert and thoughtful man, relish shimad bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire to of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sisuk Dev Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. 
although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hediantak Stobadrani we do not satam. To hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures. Or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita. It is itself righteous activity. And for one who hears about Krishna, Lord Krishna, who is dwelling in everyone's heart, acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta Presu Abhadris Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Sloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naistaki In this way, the devotee, a, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo kama loba dayas chaye chaita etar navitam stitvam sattve prasiddhati By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and, the, and thus material lusts and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso, Bhagavat bhakti yogata, Bhagavat tattva vigyana, Mukta sangha shajayate. When these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness and is enlivened by the devotion by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Drista Evat Manishwari. Thus, Bhakti Yoga serves the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a Samsayam Samagram. Understanding of the Supreme Absolute Truth Personality Godhead. Shimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 15, Verse Number 6. I have just lost him who separate. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, what? It's 15. 15. Text 6. Yasya Shana Vyogena Lokohi Apriyadarsana Uktain Rahito Hiesa Ritaka Purjate Yata. I have just lost him whose separation for a moment would render all the universes unfavorable and void, like bodies without life, purported by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta. Swami Srila Prabhupada. Factually, for a living being, there is no one dearer than the Lord. The Lord expands himself by innumerable parts and parcels as Fumsa and Vibhinamsa. Paramatma is the Swamsa part of the Lord, whereas Vibhinamsa parts are the living beings. As the living being is the important factor in the material body, for without the living being, the material body has no value. 
Similarly, without Paramatma, the living being has no status quo. <coughs> Excuse me. Similarly, Brahman or Paramatma has no locus standi. Without the Supreme Lord Krishna, locus standi is a Latin term, meaning no position. No. This is thoroughly explained in the Bhagavad Gita. Thus, they are all interlinked with one another or inter inter interdependent factors. Thus, in the ultimate issue, the Lord is the summum bonum, again, a Latin term meaning the, the greatest or the, the, the zenith of achievement, and therefore the vital principle of everything. Srila <clears throat> Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, the, the idea of interdependent factors is very important. And especially for Vedic philosophy, because everything in Vedic philosophy has this special quality of interdependent factors. That is, nothing is separate from Krishna. Everything is related to Krishna, whether people realize it or not. And what you see in the cosmos, you can also see in the microcosm. Whether you go down to the basic atomic structure of things, or whether you're looking at the whole universe as, as a whole, uh, you'll see similarities all the way. Because Paramatma is present in everything. And the Jiva is present everywhere, along with Paramatma. So therefore, when we look at things like you know, trees and buildings and cars and airplanes, actually, the primary quality of everything is Paramatma and its relationship to the Jivatma. It's not that something, uh, the primary quality is the height, width, and breadth of, a, of an object or the weight of an object or the density of an object. Those things exist, but the primary quality of everything is the presence of the Lord as Paramatma. And the secondary quality is not simply the colors and the sounds and things like that. It's the jiva. Uh, without the interconnectedness of the of Krishna with, uh, uh, well, there's, there's three things. There's uh, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, there are the individual living entities, and there is matter. So these three things are the essential qualities of everything. Uh, however, if we look only at the superficial qualities. So it's the superficial qualities are temporary. The primary qualities are eternal. So therefore, in material science and modern cultures, they focus only on the superficial qualities of things. And therefore, they don't, they don't, they don't have a way of understanding what is the purpose of life. They see life as something that begins and, and then develops, stays, gives off byproducts, dwindles, and dies. They don't see, therefore, all those things are temporary and not essential qualities of something. They are uh, because of their ephemeralness or the temporariness. The essential qualities of anything, any object, any person, anything you perceive is Paramatma, Jivatma and Prakriti. So this is a big debate that's been going on for thousands of years. What are what is the primary quality and secondary qualities of uh, anything that exists? Well, they have it wrong, and because of that, they can't figure out what is actually real and what is not real. What is what is the real goal of life, uh, how to live one's life to attain that goal. They don't understand any of those things. 
and therefore people are confused and in their confused state they become angry they break things they kill they uh, uh, are uh, let's say wasting their time on frivolous things and not understanding what is the goal of life so unless we have uh, it says similarly Brahman or Paramatma has no locus standi without the Supreme Lord Krishna very important statement even understanding Brahman and Paramatma uh, becomes incomplete unless you understand that they both uh, and Prakriti all come from Krishna the Supreme Personality of Godhead because we explain well there's an important thing is that is that is um, that the Vedas count 8,400,000 species of life. Modern scientists have hardly identified 1 million and a few hundred thousand species of life. Why is that? It's because the scientists and the uh, biologists, they are counting uh, forms or bodily forms as species. But that's not the way the Vedas count the species. For example, they count all humanoid forms as one species, but uh, the Vedas count 400,000 different humanoid forms of humanoid species. So what is the Vedic criterion of, of understanding a species and what is the materialist criterion? Materialist criterion is the body. The Vedic criterion is consciousness. Is a huge difference between those two criterions. So, uh, the highest consciousness is pure love of Krishna, expressed through pure devotional service, as in the form of the gopis. And then from there, you can go down, and there's eight million four hundred thousand other types of consciousness uh, in the material world. In the spiritual world, that number is not limited to a certain number it's infinite because the, the the type of consciousness in the spiritual world based on love for krishna is always expanding so when it says similarly brahman or paramatma has no locus standi without the supreme lord krishna that if you understand brahman or or if you understand brahman and paramatma but don't understand Bhagavan, you will eventually fall down. You have incomplete understanding of those two aspects of Godhead. <laughs> so this is thoroughly explained in the Bhagavad Gita. They are all interlinked with one another or interdependent factors. Thus, in the ultimate issue, the Lord is the summum bonum and therefore the vital principle of everything. That's the point. The vital principle of everything is Lord Krishna. Brahman or Paramatma are partial understandings of the absolute truth. And Summa Bona means the greatest degree of consciousness, the greatest, and it's always increasing. It's not decreasing in the spiritual world. So, these are things that this is real philosophy and what the uh, other philosophers are teaching is a bunch of nonsense. They don't understand anything about life or the purpose of life. So here, uh, Arjuna, he clearly says in the 11th chapter, Tvamadi Deva Purusha Puranas Tvam Asya Visvasya Param Nidanam this 11th chapter, 38th verse. You are the original personality of Godhead, the oldest, the ultimate sanctuary of this manifested cosmic world. You are the knower of everything, and you are all that is knowable. That's the point. He's all that is knowable. Vitasi Vedam Chaparam Chadama. So this. Veta, see, Veta, uh, see, you are 
the knower, Vedyam, and you are the knowable. And Param, you are transcendental. You are the transcendental Dhamma of refuge. And Tatam, uh, Atvaya Tatam, uh, this whole universe is pervaded by you in unlimited forms. So this is a description. Uh, this whole universe is, is uh, man or cosmic manifestation is pervaded by you. So Prabhupada says, everything is resting on the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is the ultimate rest. Nidanam means that everything, even the Brahman effulgence, rests on the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna. He is the knower of everything that is happening in this world. And if knowledge has any, and if knowledge has any end, he is the end of all knowledge. Therefore, he is the known and the knowable. He is the object of knowledge because he is all pervading. Because he is the cause in the spiritual world, he is transcendental. He is also the chief personality in the transcendental world. So this uh, is explained in the 13th chapter. Let me just pull that up. Where it says, Jnanam Gyeyam Jnanagamyam. So Jnanam means knowledge, Gyeyam, which is to be known, and Jnanagamyam, which is, is the person that should be approached by this knowledge. So it says, He is the source of light in all luminous objects. He is beyond the darkness of matter and is unmanifested. He is knowledge. He is the object of knowledge, and he is the goal of knowledge. He is situated in everyone's heart. So this jnana, gyayam, jnana gamyam is very important uh, because simply understanding Brahman and Paramatma, these are both partial understandings of the Lord. One must come to the understanding of Bhagavan to have a complete let's say, picture of who the Supreme Personality of Godhead his, is, and he is the primary quality of everything. Okay, so these are some thoughts about this purport. Are there any questions or comments? They are all interlinked to one another, or inter independent, like this. Interdependent. Interdependent, yeah, like this. That is, we can specify absolute truth, right? Yes. We need to put absolute truth. If you want absolute truth, it can't be uh, incomplete. It has to be complete. So the complete absolute truth is Brahman, Paramatma, and Bhagavan. It's not just Brahman, it's not just Param Brahman and Paramatma. And, uh, because everything is coming from Krishna, mm -hmm. the Supreme Personality of God, in, in his original form, as Shamsundar. So without understanding that, one has incomplete knowledge. Due to incomplete knowledge, one, one can fall down. Oh. At the beginning of the of, of the purport, uh, actually, for a living being, there's no dearer. There's no, no one dearer. Yeah. No one dearer. The Lord expands himself here. The Lord expands himself by innumerable paths of interaction as sponsor and denouncer. So this is quite intricate. So, in other words, what he's saying is that all the plenary expansions in the spiritual world and the plenary expansions in the material worlds are coming from Krishna. And then all the living entities in the spiritual world and the material world are coming from Krishna. And the living entities are not equal to the plenary 
expansions, right? And then all the entire cosmic manifestation or the prakriti is also coming from Krishna. All these things are spiritual. They're eternal. Right? But in the material world, it's possible to fall into a state of illusion by which you forget Krishna. So therefore, in the material world, people are walking around speculating all the time, confused. They don't understand what the real goal of life is. They're wasting most of their time. They're suffering most of the time or all the time. And they don't, they don't have any clue. Even after reading so many big books of philosophy by speculators, they don't have any clue of what is the real goal of life. So it's possible in such a state of confusion to remain eternally in the material world because the soul is eternal. Therefore, unless uh, one comes in contact with uh, a pure devotee, there's no, virtually no possibility that they can get out of this entanglement. So Krishna is also a living entity. Yeah. You are, I am, you're eternal. So can we say Krishna is me, but I'm not Krishna? Well, then we come to the example of, of gold and the gold ring and gold and the gold mine. Qualitatively one, but quantitatively different. So you're never really equal to Krishna. You can't say Krishna is me. But you have... Because it's such a living entity. Yeah, you have, you have similarities. That's, that's why he's saying interdependent factors. Interdependent means one thing depends on the other. Now, Krishna is independent. But we're interdependent. We depend on Krishna. So there's no such thing that the human being is independent. Uh, there's no God, and uh, we're we're we have to heroically struggle in the material world. All all that gibberish, nonsense, philosophical flights of def of uh, speculation are wrong pre wrong representations of reality. We are interdependent, yes. When I was preaching to one, he comes to court. Huh? One, once, I yes. was talking. Yes. Explaining these facts. Yes. About uh, living entity and supreme Lord. Yes. So we, we got into this argument about yoga and said, why are you trying to become a god? I told him this. This come to my mind. Yeah. Why are you trying to become God? You are old God, but you are God's servant. No God's servant, but God's servant. I don't understand the, okay. the difference. I yeah. said, well, people sometimes, you'll be trying to become God. Yes. And then I said, what's the point? You're already God. You don't need to become God. But you've forgotten your position as a God servant. You're all, no, so you're already related to God. It's not that you are God, but you're already we're related. Servants, so we, we, you're small God, but we're God servants. Oh, okay, yeah. We are yeah. God. So no, no servant like If you me. say we are Ishwaras, so there's many degrees of Ishwaras. Right. right. Yeah. That's, that's the way to understand we are God. But yeah, God in the sense that you're a controller. But there's different levels of controllers. You're not the supreme, supreme Ishmael. Exactly. Yeah. But you're God because you have the some qualities. Yes. And uh, so you're already God. You are God. Are you God's servant? It's more. I mean. Uh, you're servitor God. You're not uh, the. Uh, it's in the Sanskrit. They, you're not worshipable God. The Sanskrit, they, they, the way we say in English, God's servant. S. Okay. When we say in Sanskrit, they use adjective and the, the same, God's servant. Let me say that God is the two God enjoyer and God's servant. Yeah, that's why, yeah. In other words, worshipable God 
and servant God. Yes, correct. Yeah. Seven yeah. Yeah. Seven yeah, so in the Panchatat, the Panchatatva you have Lord Chaitanya, Nityananda, and Advaita who are worshipable, worshipable God. Right. And you have Gadadhar and uh, you have Shivas who are servant gods. Yeah. I told you like you you seven god. Yeah. So you know <laughs> like that. Yes. Because why is going to become God? Because you are No for uh, ordinary living entities, uh -huh. they also worship the servant gods in the form of spiritual master. Yeah. Yeah. But they don't worship them as the Supreme Personality of God. They worship them as servant God. But when you say God, you're talking about Ishwara. And, and, and just so we don't confuse everyone, there are different levels of Ishwara, controllers. So you have Indra, he controls something. You have Shiva, he controls something, right? So that's why they're called demigods. And then you have the ant, it controls something also. So it's also an Ishwara, but its field of Ishwara is very limited, right? right? But the Supreme Ishwara, or Parameshwara, is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Right. And, and he is the Supreme Object of Worship. So yeah. Popper gives, a, gives a analogy of the drop of the word of devotion. So the name is he, the living entity is within its pure state being connected with him. So he's part of that whole. Yes. Yes. But it's always a difference between the part and the whole. Okay. Right? <laughs> but it's a quantitative difference. It's not a, in, in, in spiritual life. It's not a uh, qualitative difference. It's the one we serve a pure devotion. See, now this is, this is hard for people to understand because mm -hmm. They see an evil person, and they say, how can that person have anything in common with God? Well, because the pure state of the person is qualitatively one with the Lord, because Satchitananda, they have an eternal soul that is full of knowledge and bliss, but not in the same quantity as the Lord. So even though it's an evil person, they are qualitatively one with the Lord. They've, they, but it's just like you have, let's say, uh, scissors, mm -hmm. and you, you forget the scissors in your backyard. And like five years later, you discover the scissors that you lost. But you can't open or close them. They're rusted. But now if you clean the rust off, then it works again. So in the same way, the soul, which falls down into uh, the world of illusion, it's like that the scissors that rust, you know, the, the, it's not like functioning. It's so yeah. Rusty, yeah. It'll never be attracted to life when it's, when it's cleaned again. It, yeah, so yeah, that's the whole point, yeah. So once you get rid of all that rust, I mean, it's just like gold. If, if you drop a gold ring into your toilet that's full of stool and urine, you don't flush the toilet and say, oh, you know, it's contaminated. It's, it's, it's not contaminated. Uh, it's just covered temporarily. So you stick your hand in there and take it out and wash it and you put it back on your finger, right? You don't flush the toilet and say, oh, it's, it's, now it's contaminated. I can't, I can't wear it again. You see? So the soul is never contaminated, but it gets covered. So even if someone is the most evil person in the world, it's not that they're, they're in a hopeless position. It, it, once they become purified, they attain their natural position of being the eternal servant of Krishna. Now, Tadiya. Tadiya, which is uh, anything connected with Krishna is worship, worshipable. Yeah, Tadiyanam, yeah, Samachara. So, so therefore, when you worship a pure devotee, Soul. So that means you worship Krishna, who's that pure soul? Well, you're worshiping the servitor God. You're serving the servitor 
to God, yes. So, Who's connecting you to the Supreme Personality of God. So that is part of the absolute? Yeah, but yeah. It, it is, yes. Well, no, it, it's, it's even better. And that's what uh, Lord Shiva tells Parvati. It's, yes. it's even better to worship the this, this servant, the pure servant of the Lord. Right. It's even better than worshiping Lord Vishnu. Well, that's why there's something called confidential knowledge. There's a whole chapter of confidential right. knowledge, right? In Bhagavad Gita, the most confidential knowledge. That means that an ordinary person will not be able to understand it correctly. They might understand something, but it's, they won't understand it correctly. Therefore, so, so this is the uh, the last verse of the ninth chapter, which says it's a little bit different, but it's very similar to the verse in the eighteenth chapter. Yeah. Engage your mind always in thinking of me. Become my devotee. Offer obeisances to me and worship me. Being completely absorbed in me, surely you will come to me. So how do you become completely absorbed? Well, it's by the mercy of the pure devotee that, that teaches you how to completely absorb your mind in Krishna. And Prabhupada says, in this verse, it is clearly indicated that Krishna consciousness is the only means of being delivered from the clutches of this contaminated material world. Sometimes unscrupulous commentators distort the meaning of what is clearly stated here, that all devotional service should be offered to the supreme personality of Godhead, Krishna. Unfortunately, unscrupulous commentators divert the mind of the reader to that which is not at all feasible. Such commentators do not know that there is no difference between Krishna's mind and Krishna. Krishna is not an ordinary human being. He is absolute truth. His body, his mind, and he himself are one and absolute. So, see, that's the point. We have a body that's different than our soul. So when we, when we start talking about Krishna, who is his body and he and his soul are one, Whereas for us, the body and the soul are two. So we get confused when we hear about Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Satchitananda Vigraha. We project upon him our own limitations. Okay. So the whole point of hearing regularly Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam is to break out of that shell that's holding us back, this duality between the body and the soul, right? I like the direct statement of direct, direct statement of Rosh Hashem Mishnah, but at the end it said that one, uh, one is, one who claims to be my devotee, but not my devotee, or is devoting my devotee, that is. Yeah, that's that why is. worshiping the devotee of the Lord, the pure devotee of the Lord, is most auspicious thing for a person to do. Yeah. So that's very confidential statement. Confidential knowledge. And then that that's taken out of context by the Mayavadis and they said, you know, oh yeah, I am God. <laughs> they ruined the whole thing. They ruined the whole thing. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Haripo, glories to Prabhupada. Yeah, we should definitely read this ninth chapter, 34th verse in the purport. A lot of uh, information there. Haripo, glories to Srila Prabhupada, Kijay.